practicing with one point perspective. You will begin by adding a horizon line and it's best when you're using a ruler to remember to kind of spread your fingers so that they're all not squashed in one spot because if you have them together your ruler tends to wobble around on you. So spread your fingers and press downward and use the edge of your paper to your advantage and you know if your line will be straight if you line up your ruler with the edge. And I would suggest while you're working on this drawing to draw lightly. Also, I would suggest to label some of the things that I label to help you remember the vocabulary for certain parts of the lines during this drawing project. Next, you'll add a vanishing point just a point in approximately the middle, and I'm labeling it vanishing point. Next, you're going to add three boxes. They can be squares or rectangles, it doesn't matter. You're going to add one that is at, above, and below your horizon line. So here I'm starting with one that is below my horizon line, and I'm using the edge of my paper, drawing nice straight lines, remembering to kind of spread my fingers on my ruler and press downward so the ruler doesn't move around on me. And as I said, three boxes below, above, and at the horizon line. Here you can see my three boxes, one that is below the horizon line, one that is above, and then one that is on the horizon line. It's important to make note that your construction lines that help you to draw your three-dimensional boxes can only go certain ways. This is mainly for when you're doing boxes, but it is a good thing to note that your lines can go to the vanishing point, they can be horizontal, and they can be vertical. Horizontal is side to side, and vertical is up and down. We will start adding the construction lines to help make our boxes look three-dimensional. In order to do this, you're going to create every line that goes from a corner all the way to a vanishing point. It's really important that these are lined up precisely in order for this to work correctly. So we'll find the corner and then gradually move your ruler so that the point and the corner are lined up. For this demonstration, I'm using a blue colored pencil so that you can kind of see the difference with my construction lines and the box I created, but I would suggest that you use a regular pencil and draw very lightly as you go so it's easy to erase. Next, you'll use horizontal and vertical lines to create the sides of your box. I'm using the top of my paper to make sure my line's nice and straight, and I'm deciding how long I want my box to be or how far back I want it to appear to go. And here I'm using the edge of my paper again, creating that horizontal line for the bottom of my box. If you want it to appear that your box is open, you can draw a line from that top corner to your vanishing point, and it creates the idea that we can see into the box. So it's up to you if you want to do this line or not. And a lot of times when we draw these lines, we draw them all the way to the vanishing point and erase. But here I just want you to see what it looks like. So I'm just kind of lightly, lightly sketching that in so you can see where that line should start and stop. So there would be the bottom. I'm kind of lightly, lightly coloring in so you can kind of see the difference and then the side of the box. And then once you have your box all sketched out, then you actually erase your construction lines. We repeat this process for the other ones, remembering to draw your lines from the corner to the vanishing point every single time, turning your ruler, checking that everything's precise and lined up. And then when you do the sides of your box, you use horizontal and vertical lines. Decide how far you want that box to go. And then if 
you want to see the inside of your box, you would add that extra line. Then you erase those extra construction lines so that your box appears to be 3D. And then you'll notice when you draw the one that is on the horizon line has less lines to add because of its location. You're just drawing the top, the bottom, and the one side because we can't see the top or the bottom in this location. Then remember, if you want to see the inside of the box, you would have to add those extra lines. Here I am erasing the horizon line that is showing. As an extra challenge, you could try out block letters. It's a similar process where you start out by creating a horizon line. And here I'm creating a couple lines so I know where to stop and start my letters so that they're the same height. To create block letters, I just lightly sketch out a capital letter and then I'll take a ruler and create kind of the block around it. And once you have your letters all sketched out in block form, you'll do similar as the boxes and each point you will draw to the vanishing point. You'll stop and start lines of your letters depending on what parts of your letter you want to show. And then similar to the boxes, you need to add the top and the sides. The only time the kind of rule of things being horizontal and vertical is kind of broken is with the letters because you can see the angle of the A is obviously kind of going at an angle and it's not straight horizontal or vertical. When you're doing the R and you have the rounded side because there isn't a point, we use that rounded side. Same thing here, I'm looking to see where I want parts of the inside of my letter to show, like what's gonna work best. Here, the kind of front of the R is gonna show, and then I'm gonna mimic the top of the R, the curve, and then on the kind of side front there, same thing. So this is definitely a little bit more tricky, but if you feel that you got the hang of it, I want you to try it out and maybe try a shorter word or your initials and you go through the same kind of process. Make sure that when you're drawing, you draw nice and light so that it's easy to erase any construction lines.